Welcome to Lake Highlands United Methodist Church, traditional church at home edition. My name is Pastor Andy Roberts. I'm one of the associate pastors here. And just a little bit later this morning, you'll hear from our senior pastor, Reverend Jill Jackson Sears. If you're just checking out Lake Highlands United Methodist Church, we would invite you to check in online on our website, lhumc.com slash online worship. If you'd like to get more information about our church, we would invite you to text the word LOOP, L-O-O-P, to 214-617-1350. You will then be receiving information about our church via text messages. If you're joining us on YouTube or Facebook, we will invite you to take a couple of moments just to say hello to one another in the comments at this time. A couple of announcements about some ways you can get involved in our church during this time. We offer a Wednesday night live prayer meeting at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. Also, you can continue to drop off food for Feed Like Highlands on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. at our new room campus, which is found on Whitehurst Drive. Also, we're offering an If Lead one day digital experience for women, which will be on August 15th, 2020. Uh, you can register at ifgathering.com slash iflead2020. And you can contact Gretel at Gretel at LHUMC for more information so she can share more with you about that event. We really miss praying for you in person, uh, but would love to pray for you. And so if you would like one of our pastors to pray for you, uh, just text the number 469-283-8059. And, a, and one of our pastors will follow up with you and set up a time to pray with you. God bless you and thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning, church family and friends. Would you join us in our call to worship? You are our security, O oh Lord. We find refuge in you. Everything that is good comes from you, Lord. You give me guidance and make my heart glad. You lead me on the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your kingdom, there is fulfillment forever. Amen. Please raise your voices with me as we sing, O Worship the King. Would you please join us in our opening prayer? O Lord of life, we seek you in the fulfillment that you give. We spend much of our lives on things that do not count, things that promise much and give little. Help us now today to find our fulfillment in your love. Lift us, O God, to a higher place of living as we lift our hearts and minds and souls into your holy presence. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together as we state the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I want to introduce to you Reverend Juan Rios, who is one of our associate pastors working with outreach at Lake Highland United Methodist Church. He's going to share a bit about one of the summer programs that's happening at the New Room, which is one of our campuses. Here's Juan. Hello, everybody. My name is Juan Rios. I am one of the pastors for the outreach ministry team here at Lake Highlands United Methodist Church. I work out of the New Room Community Church, which is our satellite campus off of Aldelia and Whitehurst. Uh, just going to talk to you for a minute about what we've been doing this summer. Um, every year, the New Room Community Church puts on a summer program called Summer Jam. Um, this is an effort on behalf of our church to reach out to community kids um, to have some fun and get our own church kids, our own church youth, our own after school program kids uh, involved in different ways to teach them about Christ, to teach them about Jesus, to teach them about community, to teach them about uh, just biblical principles and try to uh, just plant that seed in every heart and every family. And so, you know, every year there's a plan. Every year uh, what it would look like traditionally would be that the kids, the children would show up to the church on Tuesdays and Thursdays for a few hours. There would be games, activities, icebreakers, very high energy, lots of fun, snacks, um, all sorts of things were planned out and so this year you know we we planned it out we planned it out just like that um, but of course we had some unprecedented um, we unprecedented this crisis and so we had to get very creative with the way that we were going to reach out to the children in our community and so we came up with a plan for a virtual summer camp we decided to modify, absolutely modify completely our plans. And so what we did is we decided to take it virtual, to go to YouTube, to go to filming, to do everything uh, very quarantine safe, very socially distant uh, as much as possible, but yet in a way that was interactive. And so we have taken what was going to be our counselors for Summer Jam and we have created some teams We've given them team challenges from week to week, which they have to film at home, complete, and send them over to us so that we can compile what is basically an episode on YouTube in place of a summer jam day at the New Room Community Church. Um, on top of that, we have asked the community kids to participate in the comments, to like our videos, to subscribe to send in pictures, let us know what they're doing. And we created a form that went out to all of the kids, uh, that went out to a lot of the kids that we are in communication with, that we are in connection with, um, where they had to fill out, if they were watching the episodes, they had to fill out a code word, which is in every episode of Summer Jam. Um, and it is not a spoken word. It comes up on the screen at some point. So they need to be paying attention and watching out for that code word and then just a little bit of journaling writing what they learned on that episode um, so after the four weeks of summer jam once they've completed their form watched all the videos figured out all the code words written what they've learned they can then send us a picture or send in their completed form for a participatory gift which is a summer jam t-shirt for 2020 just a little incentive and so these are some of the ways that we got creative this year we're asking kids to get involved by uh, liking our videos, commenting, participating, writing stuff down. Our counselors have been key. Our um, youth have been key. Our middle school and high schoolers have been so cooperative, so creative, 
just really talented individuals. We're discovering all sorts of different talents through all of this. And so this is the way that we uh, made an effort to reach out to our kids. We sent out information about Summer Jam to all of our after school program families, to all of our church kids. And then on Wednesdays when we give out uh, our food pantry or food distribution um, kind of, you know, sacks and information and all of that, we've included a slip so that kids would be aware, so that families would be getting information about Summer Jam. And so uh, this week we are in the third of four weeks. It has been running, Summer Jam has been running all of the month of July. Uh, next week will be our final week of Summer Jam. And so, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, have had to learn so much in this age of uh, virtualness, video, filming, zooming, all the stuff. Uh, just lots and lots of learning, getting real creative, um, but we are making connections. We are making connections. We are ultimately doing our best to serve our community. We are ultimately doing our best to be true to the fact that we are called to be uh, out there making disciples for the transformation of the world. Uh, so please pray alongside us. Please pray for the New Room Community Church. Please pray for your outreach team. Please pray for the Lake Highlands communities that we may continue to do the good work that God has called us to. God bless you guys. Thank you. Our church is here for you in this time, and we are thankful for all the ways that we can serve with you. Because we're not able to meet in person for worship, we're obviously not able to take up an offering. So we would invite you now to take a couple moments to give online, and you can do that by going to lhumc.com slash give. Or you can also write a check and send it to our church office. Thanks in advance for your generosity. It's a funny thing that I'm feeling I know my season's about to change I've been praying and dreaming And I know it's time to step out and live by faith Says never fail. On this journey a while now, and through countless valleys and rugged peaks, developed strength and endurance, and learned to know. Says never fail. I'm hanging on every word. Lord, please speak. I am listening. Your voice within me whispering to me. Say, and every word that you say. 
say, come on, sing it. Every promise, and every promise you make. Says man, fail. No, no. Your promise is never fail. No. Your promise is never Today we're reading from the book of Proverbs, and so I invite you to take your Bible, and if you don't know where the book of Proverbs is, you're going to look towards the center of your book, and you'll open it up, you'll probably hit Psalms, and then the book of Proverbs is just after the book of Psalms. Now, the book of Proverbs is typically attributed to King Solomon, the son of David, and Solomon was known for his wisdom. So the book of Proverbs, understandably, is considered to be a part of wisdom literature. Now, if you're wondering what the purpose is of the book of Proverbs, you can see by reading at the very beginning of the book what its purpose is. It is considered instructional, particularly for people who are in their youth. But you'll find as you read through the book that it's full of little life lesson nuggets that apply to you no matter where you find yourself in life. Most importantly, the key to the book of Proverbs is to help develop within each and every one of us a fear or a reverence for the Lord that leads to wisdom. That is a life that is faithful and fulfilling. So I invite you today to open up your Bible to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verses 14 through 27. And if you're able, please stand for God's word. Hear these words. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of righteousness is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what they stumble over. My child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Keep straight the path of your feet, and all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Most holy God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture has been read and your word is proclaimed, we might hear with joy what you say to us today. For we pray in the name of Jesus and all of God's people together say, amen. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry that I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. 
Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. This poem may sound familiar to you. It was written by Robert Frost in 1916, The Road Not Taken. I suspect many of you had to memorize this poem in school. He uses this powerful image of two paths and a choice that has to be made. But Frost was not the first one to use this image. In fact, we see this same image in the scripture from the book of Proverbs today. There are two paths laid out before us. One is the path of the wicked, the other the path of the righteous. The path of the wicked is described as one that is filled with people who long to do wrong and to lead others in the wrong way. It is a path of darkness where people stumble because they cannot see what is before them. Then there is the path of righteousness. It is like the light of dawn which shines brighter and brighter until full day. A choice has to be made between the path of the wicked or the path of the righteous. Which one do you choose? Well, the answer seems rather obvious, the path of the righteous. But just because the answer is obvious does not mean that the answer is easy. In fact, in the Gospel of Matthew, Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about what it means to to follow him. And in Matthew 7, verses 13 through 14, he, he describes following him as like a path. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction, and there are many who take it. For the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. And then later in the Gospel of John, Jesus describes himself as the gate. Life is a path that we must choose And while it is given to us as gift, that does not necessarily mean that it is easy. So when we choose the path of righteousness, what does that look like? How are we to live? In the book of Proverbs, in our scripture passage today, we are given an anatomy of the righteous path. It requires our heart, our mouth, our eyes, and our feet. So today we're going to focus on what it means for us to follow Jesus, to take the righteous path, and the grace that God gives us along the way. And as I talk about the different aspects of the journey, I'm going to share with you some pictures that I took several years ago as I took a hike on Arcadia Beach in Oregon. While I was walking along the beach, God gave me lots of images that I thought were really powerful as I reflected on what it means for us to follow in the way of Christ. We're going to start with the heart. In our scripture passage today, we hear these words, keep your heart with all vigilance. In the NIV translation of the Bible, it says, guard your heart. When they talk about the heart here, we're not talking about that muscle organ that pumps oxygenated blood through your body. We're talking about your innermost being, your desires, our will, where we put our trust. And everything flows out of the innermost part of who we are. So what are we guarding our hearts from, and why do we guard our hearts? As I was traveling along this path in Arcadia Beach, I noticed that there were several trees right on the edge of the shoreline 
that were actually leaning away from the beach. Over the many years of winds and storms that had come off of the Pacific Ocean, the trees had begun to lean towards the coast or towards in, inward towards the land. They bent, but they did not break. And as I looked a little closer, I, I noticed that these trees, these leaning trees, had, had very strong, secure root systems in them. Those strong root systems kept them from falling and, and breaking under the stress of the storm and the wind. In the same way, you and I in this life, we, we experience tremendous winds of change and, and storms. We're experiencing that right now. And Jesus gives us the same kind of beautiful image as he speaks in Matthew 7, verses 24 through 25. He says, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. When it comes to keeping our heart with vigilance, we must build our lives on a strong foundation that is Jesus. Our lives must be rooted and grounded in him who gives life and who keeps us secure even in the winds of change and the seasons of storm. The path of righteousness begins with our hearts. But it doesn't stop there. The, the writer continues. He says, put away from you crooked speech. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. The path of righteousness has to do with our mouths and our eyes. It reminds me of a story that I learned in my childhood in the church. It kind of went like this. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down with love. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. What we seek and what we say, it matters. Our words can either build up or they can tear down. What we say and seek matters. As I was traveling on this path along the beach, I noticed that many of the trees were very, very tall. Now, I'm often impressed by things that are tall, being the short person that I am, but their height did not come by accident. Those trees kept growing and, and seeking the sun. In the same way, if we are wanting to grow in our faith, if we are wanting to grow in holiness, if we want to know Jesus more and, and follow him faithfully, we must seek the Son. We must be careful about the words that we use, the things that we seek, and what we say. Jesus reminds us, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. What we say and what we seek matters on the path of righteousness. For the path of righteousness not only includes our hearts, but also our mouths and our eyes, what we say and what we seek. This anatomy of the path of righteousness continues with our feet. Keep straight the path of your feet and all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Let your foot turn away from evil. There's nothing about the path of righteousness that is easy. That is not a promise that is made to us. If you look at this picture, you'll see that, that sometimes the path is an uphill climb. There, there's so much unknown on either side of the path. I'm reminded of what this looks like in our own lives this past week as I found out that one of our church members was diagnosed with breast cancer. This was not a path that she saw coming. It does not run in her family, and yet there it was before her with so many unknowns on either side. 
And yet, even on this path, she's blessed with grace. Grace of a church community and friends that have gathered around her. And she is able to walk in the footsteps of those who have gone before her. I was reminded of the power of this as I was walking along the beach and and putting my shoe in the footprints of those who had gone before me. You see, you and I, we are blessed on this path of righteousness. For God has provided for us people who have gone before us, the saints, if you will. People who have written uh, volumes about our understanding of God and Scripture that speak into our lives and help us to understand the Bible and what it means to follow Jesus more. But also right here in our own church in Lake Highlands, we are blessed to be able to walk in the footsteps of the saints that have gone before us. People who have established outreach ministries such as the New Room, Audelia Manor, Feed Lake Highlands, and many more. People who had the faith to to build this building and to build this church as a people. A place where we grow in Christ. A community in which we grow in holiness. God has given us grace on this path of righteousness to be able to walk alongside one another and walk in the footsteps of those who have gone before us. Every day is a choice as to which path we will take. And the good news is that Jesus invites us to travel with him. He gives us the grace that we need to to guard our hearts, to watch what we seek and say, and to step alongside him, walking in the path of the saints. The grace of Jesus is with us, and he is for us as we walk in the path of righteousness. Thanks be to God. Amen. Father God, we are thankful for this day, thankful for the opportunity to worship you, to be in your presence. Lord, we know that we're unable to gather physically with one another in this time, but even as we watch this service together this morning, We know that our entire church is gathered together around your throne. While we're separate from one another, we are one in worship, one in service, one in mission and ministry to the world in which we live. Lord, we ask that you would enable us to live righteous lives. Help us to not only talk about living righteous, but living righteously with our eyes, with our hands, with our feet, with our hearts, with our whole beings, that our very lives would be devoted to you in every possible way. Lord, we acknowledge that we cannot live the way we wanna live in our own power and in our own strength. So Holy Spirit, would you help us, would you enable us to live and walk and minister in the ways that you call us to do so in this time? Lord, we know that there are so many needs in our church right now. We know that there are people who are sick and ill. We pray for your healing presence. We know that there are those who are anxious. Would you grant them your peace? We know that there are those who are seeking direction. Would you grant them your wisdom? We know that there are those who are grieving. Would you give them your comfort and your peace in these days? Lord, we thank you so much for the great ministries that are happening here at Lake Highlands United Methodist Church, even in this difficult time in our world. Continue to empower us to transform the peoples of Lake Highlands and beyond by connecting people with the heart of Christ, by helping people know how to deepen their relationships with Christ and helping people serve with the love of Jesus Christ. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh,
Now may we go forth in peace to serve God, to love God, and to share God's love with others. We go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all of God's people together say, amen. Go in peace. Thank you.